Alrighty, folks. I hope you're excited to learn about the group module today. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank all of the sponsors here that uh, brought us together at GovCon. Uh, thank you for lunch. Thank you for sponsors, and thank you for fellowship. So excited to see folks in person. Um, uh, this is the first time I've been back to GovCon uh, since COVID. I think they have, were they had it last year as well at a random place. But anyways. Uh, a little bit about me and uh, who I work for. I'm Mark Mayon. I uh, am the Managing Director of Technical Services at Forum One. I've been making websites for about 15 years, which scares me almost every time I admit it. And I uh, want to tell you a little bit about Forum One. We have been in business over 25 years. We've partnered with over 1,000 organizations and done over 2,000 projects. And uh, we are a full-service digital agency, including strategy, creative, tech. Uh, which is what I'm here to talk about today, and also user experience. Uh, one thing I'm curious about is to learn a little bit about y'all. Um, who who is uh, here in DC by a show of hands? Cool, about half I'd say, which actually surprises me. Uh, does anyone uh, use or have used organic groups? Cool. This is, in my opinion, a group is kind of the spiritual successor to organic groups. So uh, interesting to to see some hands there. And then, has anyone actually used the group module itself? Great. Well, I'm glad to be talking to some colleagues. We are going to be starting from a square zero point of view, so uh, bear with me as we just kind of cover some level setting information. Um, so I just wanted to find kind of as a level setting activity, uh, what is a group? Well, it's a number of people or things that are located close together or, or are considered classed together. Um, and an interesting quote that I think kind of helps us little set as well uh, is don't do for a group what it can do for itself. I think one of the things that the group module does uh, in a really good way is it kind of commoditizes the content management effort of, of content itself so that as web administrators, we aren't kind of at the nexus of everything that has to happen on the website. So um, throughout your organization or agencies or what have you, uh, being able to have people log in and help you draft content uh, makes all of our lives just a little bit easier. So uh, we're going to talk about uh, just the group module itself and kind of what it does and what it is. I'm going to uh, pivot to a couple of case studies to uh, talk about some practical applications about how group module can be used. And after we have some uh, kind of a frame of reference, we're going to do a, a deeper technical dive to talk about like how, how that all came together in those circumstances. So here we go. Pulled some stats uh, this morning from uh, D.O. Um, I, what I infer from this is that uh, a lot of people needed a solution when Drupal 8 was released to get off organic groups in Drupal 7. They found group and said, okay, let's make it work. And so I think a predominant large amount of sites that are still, uh, that, that are using group module are still on the 1.x branch. Uh, the 2.x branch was like more of a transitionary, transitionary branch, and then 3.x is what we're all should be using today. Um, moving on, uh, there is also a, D, a D11 issue in the queue that was automatically generated. I didn't see any traction on it, so I, I don't think that's surprising given that D D11 was just released. So what is group? It's a collection of entities. The two things that you get out of the box are a group entity and a group relationship entity. I'm going to talk more about the group relationship entity in a little bit. Um, a group itself is fieldable, so just like with content types, you can add fields, you can configure it, you have display modes, you have form display modes, et cetera, and so forth. Um, a couple of ways that we can use group as an introductory idea is like an event like this. If I wanted to allow people to log into a site afterwards, I could associate them with the GovCon group, and then by that association, they would then have access to content that perhaps anyone that didn't come wouldn't have. So like the slides or the presentations or what have you. So that's one example. Uh, as you all are probably a little more familiar with, working with government agencies, uh, departments within a larger organization. Um, so uh, we're going to talk about City of Alexandria a little bit later, the police department, the fire department, parks and rec department, uh, you know, allowing them to manage their content uh, makes your life easier. Uh, and then another, uh, the last ex uh, experience that Forum One has uh, is with the NGO sector. We, we work with some organizations that have chapters across counties or states, and so allowing them to govern their own presence within those spaces. Um, just uh, uh, somewhat similar to content types, we also have this notion of group types, and each group type has its own set of permissions that you can configure. Uh, the permission grid in uh, groups looks very similar to the permission grid uh, for Drupal as a whole, but you have the power of configuring it 
amongst your group types, and you can have defined roles for your group type, uh, much like you can define roles for Drupal as a whole. Here's some submodules that you're gonna have available to you um, in the extend list when you simply you know, do a composer install core group. Um, group node is how you're gonna have access to content in the ways that I've been describing. Uh, group add and invite are ways that you're gonna be able to relate people to groups in either a self-serving way or in a direct way, uh, managerially yourself. Subgroups are a way for you to associate a, a parent-child relationship in groups. And then group member profiles are a way to surface um, user data in a, in a profile-esque way. Um, so those are some of the things that you get. There's a, certainly a rich community of extensible modules that extend group. We're gonna talk a couple of, about a couple of those, but we're not gonna go too crazy. So this is where, I, now that we just have a basic understanding of group, I know that many of you already do, I wanted to pivot to some case studies where I thought we could relate uh, like how we see this in action, and then we'll talk about the technical detail about those uh, implementations. So for Fairfax County Public Schools, uh, we manage all of the web properties, including their 200 some odd schools and their primary site. Uh, but for this project, we created an intranet. And uh, for, for that intranet, the, one of the problem spaces that they had was like they had a crazy workflow by uh, which any piece of content needed to flow through in order for it to become uh, published. And so we had a, a, a number of sit-down meetings over a couple of weeks to ultimately have uh, this as an outcome. And uh, little arrowy things mean emails get sent, boxy things mean that they're uh, workflow transitions. It'll be in the slide deck uh, and I'll get you a link. Uh, don't feel like you need to get very close and study it. So they had this complicated landscape and they were like, Mark, how can we figure out how to have the administrative offices um, come together and be able to manage all these different uh, uh, pieces of content to get it out to our stakeholders? Um, and so, uh, you know, they have the Office of Communication and the uh, 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 OCIO and the uh, superintendent's office, et cetera, and so forth. And so we decided that group was a good uh, a choice for that. Um, and so, uh, here's the outcome of the roles and responsibilities uh, as we saw them as far as kind of like a group construct uh, point of view. So the, we, within group, I was mentioning how you can set up uh, roles for each group type, and then there's still this notion of Drupal roles. So you have multi layers of, of capability to manage permissions and we all have stared at a Drupal permission grid before, so even more tech boxes. Um, there's also a number of workflow transitions that we uh, pop, uh, propagate throughout the group so that uh, Meredith and her stakeholders can say, okay, uh, OCO, OCO needs this published, communications needs this published, we're gonna step through these transitions to get to a space where we can actually have it published. <clears throat> the next case study I wanted to talk about is the city of Alexandria, and this is more of a municipal context. The city of Alexandria, as I mentioned at the top, has um, an organization that, uh, kind of similarly to uh, Fairfax County Public Schools, and uh, as mentioned, they have the police department, the fire department, the parks and rec, and then they have uh, the Office of Communication that kind of is the ultimate authority of actually getting the content published. So. All of these uh, departments and offices uh, generate their content, they get it to a place where the uh, communication office reviews, and then it's published for the uh, public to consume. And so that's what this looks like from a group roles and Drupal roles uh, point of view. There's an editor and a publisher at the group level, and then uh, the, the uh, global content publisher is the uh, person that actually pushes it out and makes it public. Uh, again, just a list of workflow transitions that get worked through. I learned a new term called embargo uh, when it comes to, comes to content publishing for this particular project. Um, and so there you go. So now that we have some like practical applications of where we use this in the real world, I wanted to go a little bit deeper from a technical point of view about what's really going on. So here we can see uh, the, the group mod, or excuse me, the group entity on, on the left and then the thing that's kind of interesting is that rather than just like fielding the group entity with like the things that it's related to, you have this notion of an actual entity that defines the relationship. And so at the top you can see in small print, hopefully it's not too small, it says uh, group media. 
and the group media module is actually what defines the quality of the, con uh, of the uh, group relationship entity itself. So it's the thing that informs group of what the entity is that is related to that group. So that's how it's extremely extensible and extremely flexible. But it also means if you have like custom entities or something weird, you're going to have to like figure out how to extend this group relationship entity to, to tell group what you need it to do from a <coughs> excuse me, permissioning perspective. So as I already mentioned, there's group media at the top, there's group node at the bottom. The green is what you get out of the box. The group itself is what defines the quality of the group relationship between it and the user. Because fundamentally, like a group module would do nothing if you couldn't relate a person to it. Um, so that, that give, that's given to you out of box, but everything else is like a, a thing that you have to turn on. Um, here I've started wanting to drill a little bit deeper into the permissioning system. So at, again, when you turn on group, what you get is an anonymous role, which is exactly what it sounds like in a, a Drupal context, which is anybody that hits any of your entities uh, is going to have that permission level. An outsider is somebody that is authenticated but is not a member of the group. And then a member is a person that actually belongs to that group. Lastly, I just threw in content administrator because again, like I feel like most of the point of group is like easing content administration pains. I'm sure there's many applications, but that's predominantly the way that I think about it. Um, didn't really know how to make a pretty graphic about this, but there is a module called group content uh, moderation exactly what it sounds like. You turn on workflow, you turn, you turn on group content moderation, it works. Um, and so enough about that. There's a link to it. Happy to answer any questions to that end. Another slide that I was challenged to think of a fun graphical way to talk about this, but this is our friendly seven theme. And what we're looking at is advanced outsider permissions, which is an interesting word salad that just means how do you want the, your actual Drupal rules to uh, be related in the group context. And so basically if you needed, if you wanted the ability for everybody on the website to be able to view group content that you've defined, you could give the ability for a Drupal role to do that, but require them to be authenticated. Um, the, the, that's like, why wouldn't you just do that at the Drupal level and like a content type and just give the public the view? Well, maybe you want them to be authenticated. Maybe you want to be a little more bespoke. And for one group type, you want to allow that. For, for another group type, you don't. But basically, uh, you know, if you wanted to like have a little more power and still be able to access the um, Drupal roles themselves and give them some permissions, this is where you would do that. The next idea I wanted to talk about is at the top here, I've defined a path. And the way group works is that in any context, if you want it to govern whatever is happening, you have to give it the context somehow to do that. So the, the way that that works out of box is with a path. And so you have the group type as the first parameter, the uh, group slug as the second, uh, uh, you know what I mean. And, and then lastly, the, the node slug <laughs> as, as the third part of the parameter. And so um, for the internet, the way that this plays out, is that an anonymous user hitting the website can't see anything at all because this is their internet and it is for the employees and the public should not have access. The next level is like you have to authenticate, which they do through a single sign-on. And uh, after you sign on, you are now an employee. And you likely don't belong to any groups because the way that we've made their solution is that you are just a person looking for information. and so. You're an outsider in the context that we were talking about before, which is they can view any published content that we've uh, worked out through workflow. Next, there's a member. And so let's say the, the chief of the EOCIO uh, needs to review content produced by their unit uh, before it goes on to the communications team for publication. Well, I can add the chief as a member of the group, and he's now able to see unpublished content because we've given him that permission as a member of the group him or her, excuse me. Um, and uh, the next level would be a content administrator type role that I highlighted that you would have to create and configure. So now this person is able to generate content within their group. They're able to review all unpublished content. 
And they're also able to now edit the content and uh, let it market as needs review for the next level, which would be the web administrator. The web administrator would be a classic Drupal role. They would have access to all content throughout all of the groups so that they don't have to like worry about clicking into a group to like review content. You know, they can have like the standard content administration pane and we can create a little view in their thing that says this is the, the workflow items that are needing your review. And they can just tick off uh, the content that needs review. They say great, or you can kick it back for edits or whatever. Uh, but they're ultimately the people that are going to be able to hit the publish button and provide the outsider role, the ability to actually view the content. Next, I wanted to talk about some things that you should definitely be aware of in working with Groovy. <clears throat> Media is really annoying. Uh, I would highly suggest that you per, like keep a very open mind as far as allowing people to manage media in a group context, because what happens is, let, let's, let, let's take logos as an example. If everybody has to create their own media in a group context, you're gonna have 800 versions of a logo, and it's gonna be a mess. Um, and so the only time that I advocate for a group-based media context is like, let's say it's like a very, specific PDF to that unit or something, or like you just want very like tailored content. Um, but like you want everybody kind of playing in the same sandbox when it comes to like images and general media content. So that's definitely one gotcha. The next thing I wanted to call out is Drupal already has kind of a like you need to have a nuanced understanding of how Drupal works when it comes to authenticated user loads because cache contexts all the way down. Um, like you need to understand, like if a user is logged in, um, the way that Drupal tends to work, uh, in my opinion, is like every user has its own cached version of everything. And when you add that to a group context, it becomes like infinite sadness. Like there's just like, your, your cache table is gonna be enormous and like, and so it's something to be aware of. It's something you need to kind of learn about and be, to become more robust about. I had a real big problem with the city of Alexandria where <clears throat> uh, they, their menu had like 50 menu items and um, because of the nature of like you can put unpublished stuff in menus, not only is it checking like default Drupal permissions, it's also checking in group context and it's just like insanity. Like we, it took me a week to figure out what's really going on. Um, so like, we ended up like bending the menu um, and just like pulling a cached version no matter what. Um, happy to answer some questions about this if you have some. Uh, here's, you know, we all have seen a composer.patches.json uh, probably. And uh, there's, these are some important patches to be aware of. Um, I was talking about the notion of the route earlier. And if you want to use group out of box, in order for it to be able to permission anything, that you need to use that route. But let's say you just want a, a, you know, a pretty URL and you don't want your URL to be like, uh, you know, alexandria.gov slash OCIO slash page, you know. Well, I just want a, 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 a more workable URL for the public. Well, this patch gives you more contexts in like Node or like in a, a lot of different ways because you don't really get it out of box. And, uh, and so this is a way for you to be able to tell, like in a, in a uh, bi-directional way, like what content is related to this user, what content is related to this group, what content is related to this node, uh, or what entity is related to this node. And it just makes your life a little bit easier when you're trying to configure stuff. Um, the, the last one is just like a UI, uh, UX thing. There's like a weird bug where like revisions tab appears twice, just kind of cleans that up. Uh, and uh, the group context uh, for content, that fix, fixes and uh, provides you more flexibility with tokens when you want to configure tokens for stuff. Same way that I was talking about with the routes. And uh, yeah, pretty short and sweet today. Happy to answer any questions. Mark, I have a question? Yeah. Um, so when I'm looking at the permissions page of Drupal, there's 10 billion Checkboxes. Yep. Um, there will be something like view node, uh, edit node of like a certain content type. 
then when you go into the groups and you have the roles there, and it says like view node, edit node, so on and so forth. How do the two permissions, those two sets of checkboxes work together? Do I say it like the Drupal level can't view, but then the group can view? Like, how do those two work together? Yeah, sure. Let me give you a few scenarios. Uh, the first would be for uh, FCPS. We uh, made it so that the authenticated user could view any published node content. So that means that as an authenticated traditional exactly how it sounds Drupal role. That's how they would get access to the broad content throughout the website. Uh, for ACLS, we provided a solution that was this like chapter-based solution that I was talking about, where like in a, in a chapter, you only want the folks related to that chapter, or like the folks that are most interested in it are gonna be related to that chapter. It's not information that's necessarily disseminated widely to the public. So you would not allow access to that content type from a uh, anonymous or authenticated or otherwise Drupal role you would provide the view context in the, in the group context to those chapters, and they would be accessing it through that route that I described where it's the group and then the group, and then, then. And so that's how you kind of differentiate between everybody and group folks. Okay, thank you. So essentially you're saying that they wouldn't stack. You wouldn't set a certain layer, a certain level of permissions on the group on the other one stack. You would actually not define it on the Drupal the Drupal rule and only define it on the group. And I, I gave you different scenarios. Like, you can do it any way you want. Well, it's yeah, basically yeah. I, what I, I'm I saying. Yeah, yeah. Of, I just want to confirm enough with you, Dick, but I, yeah. I, I went through the problem of trying to figure yeah, out. Yeah, so uh, I'm just going to back up. This, this, uh, that's such a word salad, I always forget it. Uh, advanced outsider permissions. This is where you could, like, uh, set a Drupal role context within group. So you can work from the inside out, or you can work from the outside in. It's totally up to you. Yeah, I didn't know that inside out and outside in existed until I was there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I do know it works. That's how it used to work in organic groups. Yeah. You have overrides within the group, like specific permissions. So if the Drupal page says you can't access it, but the group page says that you can, which one takes precedence? If you do not allow anonymous to view a content type, right. you, and you go to a traditional node route, you're gonna get a permission denied error. Right. If you give a group member a, either outsider or insider, which means they have to be authenticated, the ability to view, they, ha they, can, they will be able to view it through the group route, they will still not be able to view it through the, the node route. To, unless you gave them that permission in the traditional Drupal check, check boxes. Sure. What if it's on like a view though? It's not necessarily that route. Uh, group bakes everything in, so it's respecting whatever that whatever whatever permission matrices you set up. So, just like if you were creating a traditional view in a traditional uh, Drupal role ecosystem, if you if somebody does not have access to see something, they're not going to see it in views. Okay. I do have a separate question. Subgroups versus just another group. I honestly don't know. I've never used sub subgroups, so yeah. if anyone has in the audience, if you want to chime in, uh, I just know that it's a thing. I don't know why you would do it. I don't know if there's like a permission matrix thing where like a, a parent group you can like govern a subgroup. I haven't really played with that, unfortunately. So. And a good scenario for that would be uh, if you have like different departments and then each department has like I work at the zoo we have animal programs and then we have like all the different animal programs under but it, it gets really complicated yeah I'm going to suggest another example like that given your uh, background in education um, you know, um, the district and then you have schools underneath the district Classrooms that are in school, uh, potentially subclassrooms that are in classrooms. Would that be something that you might use subgroups for or, or not? Like that? Question. Cool, appreciate that. Uh, sorry, that was the, could you, would you be able to answer oh, the question? Oh, yeah, that? sorry. I, I'm just going to have to fall back on. I haven't re really used subgroups, so I don't want to like, over promise and under deliver on like, the ability to matrix 
uh, permissions outside of what, I, what I've already described. But like, I could certainly see an ecosystem where you could have a group called students, and then you could just relate all your students to that group. Um, uh, you know, I think there's interesting notions that one could entertain with ADFS and just like automatically associating people with groups. I think that's not something I've done personally, but it seems pretty logical to uh, a logical conclusion to solve a lot of problems. Um, so. Uh, my question is, uh, how can, I don't know if you know anything about, uh, if groups can be leveraged with like ECA entity, uh, events, conditions, action module, if you have any experience with that, or um, another kind of somewhat related question is uh, associating custom entities, entity types with groups, is that something yeah, as I noted uh, in the in the Prezi for the custom entities question, you're going to need to tell group about your entity in a way, which is that that uh, group entity uh, relationship entity that I was talking about. And so you'll have to define how that entity works and like what you want it to connect to. So like group handle is the group side for you, but you have to define how uh, your entity knows that it's related to the relationship. Um, and then the other part of your question was ECA. I, I don't know specifically about it. I will say that I've been able to extend group any way I want, any time I've tried. So to the degree that you can write some code to do something, I feel pretty confident you can probably do that. Uh, I think one of the patches you mentioned had to do with uh, making that group-specific URL more human being. Am I remembering correctly? Yes. Okay, so in default Drupal, if I go to forward slash about, through a view or something, I can realize that uh, my node ID, uh, right? Yep. Can I do that? So what you end up doing is um, you end up kind of like handling the the routing into group yourself. So you like sense for the 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 action being fired at view node page, and then you go ask group, hey. If this person is anonymous or authenticated or outsider or insider, you're like this is who this is, how do you want me to react? And you basically ask group through some custom code, and then you either get a permission denied or you get to see the the, the page itself. But the, the the reason that the patch is important is because it's a heck of a lot easier to do it with the patch because those associations are kind of already there for you to to, to grab uh, in in the node context because it's relating to the group to the node. So at least you have that. If you didn't have that, you're on a like rabbit hole of like finding out all that information yourself with custom code, and because you don't have any context, you have to like figure it all out and put it all together in PHP. And uh, over here, uh, just going back to the subgroups. I think the, the subgroups themselves are considered group content. The node would be considered group content. So you can have a user that would a member of a group and we get access to those subgroups by setting up the power of permissions on the internet. Y'all are hitting real hard on the one, like one little space in the group module like that. I don't know very well. I, 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 if, if you're telling me that that's how it works, I believe you, but if you're asking me how it works, I don't know. No, with subgroups. So yeah. subgroups and that's how it works. Okay, cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. Sorry. Uh, where do you go from getting groups for Drupal 7? Uh, to manage access to nodes uh, for user. So if user is in a particular node, there is a particular group, then they have access to certain, uh, they, they can do certain things on the node. We tried to do it with the groups, but it seems like we didn't have a way to do it directly. Is it where relationship comes in, or is it somewhere else? Yeah, the, the way to do it with group out of box is that you have to, like it, when you, um, you're logged into Drupal and then you have uh, groups uh, as a new drop down and you have to drill into the group and then go to the content tab and then click on the link of the content, not like on an action. And the link is the, it will give you the proper group route for that content item. If you, if you just go to your content administration overview pane, uh, like classic Drupal login, that's gonna be in the node context. If you, want, if you want the route for the group context, you have to go through that rabbit hole to get the proper route for groups to, to, to permission it. Um, and then if you want to use classic node pathing, as the gentleman asked earlier, you have to do some work, as, as you were noting. 